So we've discussed PN junctions, and then we've built on this idea to talk about bipolar junction transistors. There are two types of BJTs. There are PNPs and there are NPNs, and we went into that in a lot more detail. Now, as if that wasn't exciting enough, you can now go on and build another layer on a device, and this device is known as a thyristor, or a silicon-controlled rectifier. So here you can see we now have a PNPN device. So we've got a device with four layers. Now this looks really complicated, but I'm gonna go through it very briefly. And the most important thing is that you understand the IV characteristics and how they can be applied in various circuits. But first, in order to understand what's going on exactly with these, let's take this and flip it on its side. And whereas with the, uh, with the transistor, we had an emitter, a collector, and a base, here we have an anode, a cathode, and a gate. Now, in order to understand how these work, I find it sometimes easier to picture this instead of a four-layer device like this. Think of it as the equivalent of two BJTs attached together. If I take this idea of two transistors attached together, you can see that if I apply a voltage or a potential difference across the device, so we make my anode here positive and my cathode negative, the device will not turn on. Because although here at the bottom, the PN junction is forward biased, and here at the top, the PN junction is also forward biased, you have these, uh, this junction in the middle, this layer in the, these two layers in the middle, which remain reverse biased and they block any current from flowing. So this device in this state is off. However, if we now apply a small gate potential, so we now have a small current to the base, so it's a positive potential here compared to the cathode, but it's a lot smaller than we have uh, applied across the entire device, now, as you know, already know how BJTs work, you know that this will turn on the equivalent of the NPN transistor that I have here in the bottom. And once this is turned on, you should also realize that you're going to get a flow of current coming through this NPN transistor, and that current, because of the way it's attached, is essentially flowing into the gate of the PNP transistor, and that switches the PNP transistor on. So once you apply that uh, gate potential, you switch your thyristor on. However, unlike a transistor, when I remove the gate voltage, then the device remains on. Now, why is this? Well, I find this easy to explain by going back to the four layered structure that the device really is made out of. So here we go back and you can see I have my anode, my cathode, my gate, and my PNPN structure. Now, when I apply my voltage across the device, as I said earlier, the bottom junction, the bottom PN junction is forward biased, and the top junction, PN junction, is also forward biased. However, this central junction is in reverse bias and we get no current flow through the device because that is blocking the current. I apply a small gate potential and then in the bottom you have uh, electrons that are the majority charge carriers from this N-doped region at the bottom near the cathode. They will start to flow into the P-type region and your device is essentially switched on but the buildup of electrons is so big in this p-type region that even if I remove the gate voltage, it the basically the, the lower three layers appear as one giant n-type region because in this central region here where we have our p-doping, so many electrons have built up that electrons become the, the majority charge carriers. So it appears like this is uh, just a PN junction. So even when I remove the positive uh, potential at the gate, because I have my negative cathode and my positive anode, the device remains on. And the only way you can switch this device off once you've applied um, a, a voltage across the anode and cathode and then a gate voltage, in order to switch it off, you have to remove the potential across the entire device. So in transistors, once you apply a potential difference across the device, if you apply a potential at the base, so you make the base positive and an NPN 
uh, transistor, the transistor will switch on. But as soon as you remove the base voltage, then the transistor turns off. When it's on, it acts exactly like a diode. And when it's off, it's just off and it blocks. So it's, it's, it's blocking. Now, a thyristor, when you apply a voltage across the device, it won't turn on unless you apply a potential difference to the gate as well between the cathode and the gate then it switches on. However, when you remove the gate voltage, it will not switch off until you remove the entire potential difference across the device. Again, it will only allow current to flow in one direction, the same as a transistor, but the, the mechanism for switching it off is different. This is the circuit symbol for a thyristor. Now let's take a look at the IV characteristics. We know that a thyristor only allows current to flow in one direction and only when a gate voltage is applied. So it kind of, when it's in its on state, acts like a diode because it only allows current to flow in one direction when switched on. So we know if we, if we were to draw it, um, it would, since it acts like a diode, in reverse bias, it would have, it looks very similar, right? It has a small leakage current here, and then it would break down, usually uh, avalanche breakdown you get uh, here as well. So this looks just like our uh, IV curve for a diode. And if it was already on, it would also then sharply increase um, like this with voltage. So you have a sharp increase in current with voltage. However, when the device is off, it continues because you have essentially, uh, you have a PN junction that is reverse biased in your thyristor when, um, when it's off, when there's no gate potential applied. This would act like a diode in reverse when you have forward bias, when it's switched off. So we're now talking about forward bias but the device is switched off. So switched off is going to look like this again. So you get a small leakage current. Now, what happens in reverse bias, for a diode, when it's in reverse bias, you eventually get avalanche breakdown. Now, the same thing would occur here. So you get a small leakage current when the device is off. And as soon as you get avalanche breakdown, the device starts to break down. So the, you're going to get this effect, but in forward bias. However, once it's only one PN junction in the entire thyristor, and our thyristor is a four layer device. So once that one PN junction has broken down through avalanche breakdown, it basically the, the device turns on. So it goes it breaks and then from here onwards the voltage so the voltage buildup was really high because you're building up a potential you increase the voltage and the potential builds up over that reverse bias pn junction that acts as a huge resistance to the flow of, of any current once that breaks down then the voltage diminishes so it's it goes back to its normal IV, the normal IV characteristics of a diode, because current is all of a sudden flowing through that uh, PN junction. So that PN junction is no longer blocking flow. So it goes like this, you have a small leakage current, it breaks or you get avalanche breakdown and then it will follow this usual IV curve because it's acting like a diode. So this voltage here at which this occurs is known as the breakover voltage. Of course, if you switch the device on, so we apply a potential at the gate before this breakover voltage, what will happen is, so this the device is off, it's in forward bias, so you get the same relationship between current and voltage here and as soon as we switch it off then it reverts back to this IV curve without the without going through a breakdown. 